Welcome to all of you. We are really happy to have you here today to this event, The Magic of Being a European Leader in Thailand. So today we are pleased to have Thomas Iravan with us. And actually, this is the first time AES has like a speaker series face to face. So thank you very much for making this possible, Thomas. And yeah, before we start and before I introduce Thomas in a proper way and also our topic, I want to say a few words about AES. So AES is founded in 2019 and provides a platform for young professionals and students to create cross-cultural connections. Our mission is to foster intercultural respect and understanding between Asia and Europe. We started as a student society at Technical University of Munich, and now we started um, slowly to grow into a global community with members from all over the world. So if you are interested in our work at AES, or if you want to join, then just reach out to us on aesmuc.de or on our social media handles. Now I want to introduce you to the structure of today. Let's see, maybe something will change again. Um, so first of all, I will introduce the topic of today and then Thomas will introduce himself and then directly start in our main part. He will give us remarkable insights and I'm also pleased to ask him some questions we collected in our AES community together. In the end, we will have an open Q&A, so feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen and then we can still answer some questions. Okay, just keep it short. To keep it short, I will say that today's topic is all about the challenges you will have as a future or as a current um, manager, such as lack of communication, or uh, unlucky teamwork or time management problems. So we are thrilled today to learn how to cope with such situations. And we will find answers to questions like, how can I lead a team of international people in another country? So as our guest of AES, we are delighted to welcome Thomas Iravan, Senior Vice President and Head of Business Unit Driver Assistance at Bosch. With his experience as technical manager of Bosch plant in Thailand, he will guide us to be better leaders and also to improve our skills. So let's welcome officially <laughs> Thomas with a huge applause. Thank you. Thank you, Melina. Yeah. <laughs> so virtual, virtual applause, of course. And um, yeah, sorry again for the delay. So now we have another challenge. Um, let's see if I can later share my content here with my iPad. Uh, so it was planned a little bit differently, but don't worry, um, we, will, we will manage it, uh, as we are quite flexible. Yeah? That is part of my talk, by the way. And first of all, I have to see and to look now to the participants list. I saw already, hey, some Thai people in the line. Sawadee kap, yindi dong rap, na kap, sawadee mai kap. Hopefully you can see me, hear me well, and also welcome to everyone, not only my Thai friends, but also I saw some people from around the world, from India, of course, uh, Germany, Europe, I don't know, everywhere, wherever you are. Really nice to see you. So I have here in front of me, I have the chat, I can even read a little bit in between. So let's keep that a little bit also interactive. Um, so first of all, now, interesting part is coming. I try to share my screen uh, here from my iPad. Uh, hopefully that works. So it works, right? So now you can not see me anymore, right? In parallel, no. But no, but you can see the content, right? Um, I, but that's because of our our iPad um, setup here. Um, otherwise, I would have to, uh, or maybe Melina. So we are working on a workaround in parallel. So Melina might uh, share her camera in parallel while I'm sharing here from my from my uh, iPad, yeah. Okay, so as I said, uh, let's start. So don't worry, there will be no slide because that's the only slide I brought um, with me. It's a handwritten mind map. 
and I will guide you through um, through my story. I start now with the first part because we are already late with a very, very short introduction of myself. Um, so Thomas Iran, as said already, um, I was born 1978. Um, that means I'm 43 years old right now. And of course, the interesting part is um, I was born um, as uh, yeah in Germany, but my father is a Chinese guy born in Indonesia. That means I was used to uh, work, uh, used to work, used to live and used to, to be raised between two cultures. Um, that's my background. I grew up rather um, yeah, classical in Germany, even though with a very German mother and a very Chinese father, it's of course uh, quite interesting. Yeah. Um, then I studied in uh, Germany um, physics and computer science, and later on I uh, did my PhD. Um, and 2006, I became, um, I got my PhD in uh, nanotechnology, basically quantum physics. That means, uh, yeah, here this picture shows that I produced the first structure, nanostructure which was uh, able, uh, which is capable to store uh, a, a qubit or work as a qubit for quantum computing. And then, um, so now we try the camera in parallel. Let's see until the camera arrives. And then I started my career at Bosch in the very beautiful area of the, in the very source part of Germany, in the Allgäu area. Um, Bosch plant in Allgäu may be still today one of the best plants, not only in the Bosch world, it's one of the best plants in the world. And I'm quite uh, happy that I could start there my career. I learned a lot, which I always used in my life afterwards, specifically or especially also in, in Thailand as a plant manager. And then it started. So my, let's say, intercultural journey. Um, so I hope you can can see me again uh, or still because we okay here's an, another computer broke down here for whatever reason um, and then I started in a Mara plant in 2013 and I remember very well when my executive vice president that time in a there was a leadership meeting in in Bleichach or from from the Bleichach leadership team and then I um, in a very late night after this leader, leadership meeting my executive vice president uh, asked me that time hey Mr Erwan what about being a, a plant manager in Thailand. And I remember, well, I really texted my wife in the middle of the night. What do you think? Shall we go to Thailand? And she said, after, I don't know, a few minutes, she was already still awake. She said, of course, why not? Yeah. And then it started um, the most uh, yeah, interesting, interesting part, uh, I would say, uh, working abroad started there. And I arrived 2013 in Amada plant. Um, so, and um, yeah, this is what I'm talking about today. So I really love Thailand and I really love the Thai people. So I hope many of my former colleagues, friends uh, from Thailand uh, are here in the line um, because I learned so much about leading in an intercultural environment. And some topics are maybe Thai specific, but I think we can learn a lot also from Thai principles, which you can easily transfer to uh, many, many leadership uh, topics uh, uh, across the globe. Yeah. Um, so um, I would start now uh, with the first chapter here. Unfortunately, we are still working on the uh, on the camera. I mean, what I can do always is if I stop sharing, then you can see me. But that's maybe not not good. Asking my assistants here. And no. Without stop sharing, you cannot switch on your camera. No, not I think possible. that's no, that's that's not a feature here in uh, in it's my in the teams in the teams app. So I can either share or or use the camera for whatever reason. And we as well okay. cannot switch on the camera. Yeah, yeah. You cannot switch on the camera either. Huh? Okay. But then maybe show me show me the chat again. So I hope this is okay for you guys. Um I can also stop sharing in between a little bit while I'm I'm telling a story, but then I have to switch always. Um a little bit. So when when I arrived in, in Thailand, um so <laughs> so still everyone there, right? Okay, please please tell me in, in the chat uh, short shortly if, if you're still connected. I see 75, 78 people, but the chat is somehow empty. So I'm just wondering. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. It's coming. Great. Yes, because the browser was broke down. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, our, our browser broke down. So you are still connected, but our browser broke down. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyhow, we are very flexible. So when I come to Thailand, um, I mean, the first months, I would say um, I saw many, many smiling people and Many people say always, yes, we come to that later. 
Um, and of course, it was, was nice, to, nice to start in, in Thailand working. But I experienced very quickly one very, very important um, principle. And I will start with this one, because if you need to remember as a leader in Thailand, one thing, uh, you should remember the Greng Jai principle. Yeah? My Thai colleagues know what I'm talking about. Greng Jai is for me, maybe what I experienced, the core or the heart of, of how Thais are living uh, together. Because if, you, if, if you're in a Re European or Western and you are not understanding this core principle well, you will have intercultural conflicts, misunderstandings, and serious, serious problems sometimes. Yeah. Uh, wh what is Greng Jai about? I think you can write an entire book about Greng Jai because it's not just to translate, easy to translate. Of course, the Official translation is like considerate, I would say, yeah. Like, um, uh, but the meaning is is more. It's 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 broader. It's about respect. It's about empathic, being empathic to others. It's about also like like uh, how to treat each other, also relative to the status of each other. It's about the peaceful atmosphere to to be nice to each other. It's about keeping face and don't lose face of yourself or others. So this is really. I, I cannot now uh, explain um, it's a long time about that one, but if you would like to learn something about uh, a Thai culture, I think you should uh, uh, Google it or read a book about Greng Jai. That's one of the core principles, and we will come across that one many more times. So I skipped now a little bit uh, to save some time um, directly to another principle, or not, not principle, another concept. And this is a concept about three uh, circles. So that's about how is the Thai um, uh, society organized. And uh, that's maybe difficult to understand from outside, but after a while, I came across this simple, um, this simple uh, concept of the three circles because I, I learned that there is one inner circle, which is the green one. The inner circle is the family circle. It's a very closed circle. Um, that's a very, very um, closed circle where you typically as a foreigner cannot enter at all because it's really the core of a family, for example. Then there is the very large blue circle, what I painted here blue. The large blue circle, I call it the middle circle, is really where all friends, all colleagues, the entire society is interacting uh, in, in this circle. So everyone feels well in this circle. This is where all foreigners also act. So in the best case, you will always act uh, in this circle if you're working or living in Thailand, even though if you're a foreigner. Um, nevertheless, there is a small outer red circle. And um, hopefully you, you don't experience that too much, but it exists. And this is sometimes when, when you're wondering about um, people getting unfriendly uh, or even aggressive or even crime happens there because this is the circle where people interact who are, let's say, um, don't know each other, uh, don't want to um, know each other, don't want to work with each other, uh, people who just don't know each other. Yeah? So in, in, a, in a public life, for example, if you're on the street and you, you crash into a, a car of someone, typically the people don't know each other and then they even start fighting um, because they are acting in the outer circle or when you, you, you get some fights really physically. Um, that's really critical from my point of view because then you see also another side uh, where the people maybe stop smiling or smile in a very, very different way. Um, and there's one funny, funny example. I can now uh, explain uh, that while maybe I stop quickly sharing, then you can see me a, a few, few minutes again. Let's, let's try that one. Um, so now <laughs> you can see me and I can explain to you the, the next example, which I experienced. So imagine the following. There were some friends of mine from Mexico and in Mexico, they, they felt a uh, I mean, they know there's a lot of crime and it might be difficult. Uh, so they were really feeling very safe in Thailand, but they also behaved from, from my point of view, a little bit rude or not so polite um, to others. And there was the following story. They, they took a taxi, a cab. They said, hey, taxi driver, drive me to the mall. Yeah, That's just around the corner. And uh, the taxi driver said it, it cost 400 baht. And then the taxi, then they, my friend said, oh, no, it's maximum 200 baht, 400 baht is too much. And then they somehow started driving, but they had no clear commitment about the price. And then um, they get off the taxi, they took the 200 baht, throw it to the taxi driver, and then walk away. And then suddenly, um, 
they realized a few seconds later that the taxi driver with a huge knife was running behind them and and and, and it was crying and shouting at, at them and, and and then they said hey sorry sorry okay here you have your your 200 baht so what happened i mean this taxi driver uh, my friend they did many 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 list checks the first one was that uh, the taxi driver obviously um was was right or, or thought he was uh, right to to uh, request 400 baht instead of 200 and then uh, my fr uh, he lose he lost face of course uh, due to the behavior of uh, my friend secondly my friend he throwed the money i mean throwing things in thailand uh, is just not polite you should not do that yes yeah? so you should hand over it nicely you should not throw it and the third one is he throwed a money bill and the on the on the bill Uh, everyone knows there is a picture of the king, and the king is uh, the very highly respected person in the Thai hierarchy. So you cannot just throw a picture of the king. That's super, super rude. So therefore, he got very, very angry. And uh, so my friend, he did almost everything wrong in this short example. Um, so let me share again my screen um, to continue. So that was the taxi driver story here. And, and how to interact now properly uh, in, in the normal society, so in the blue area here. For example, if you don't know someone, let's assume you, you really don't know someone, you meet someone the first time. I mean, it's super easy to interact in Thailand because just be a little bit friendly, do the why, for example, smile, do some small talk look friendly and you are automatically not a stranger anymore in that sense that you're in the outer ring you are already in the middle ring where everyone feels well so my um, my best um, let's say a hack here is really act act as much as possible and build a good relationship in the middle circle um so let's now come to another point here number four Uh, in my uh, presentation here, this is um, what ex what I experienced after a while in Thailand. Because um, in Thailand we have uh, there is a very um, a clear hierarchy. I come to that a little bit later. And at the beginning, when I arrived in Thailand, I think many people were having a lot of questions because I, I was coming from Germany, and they said at the beginning, um, "Oh, that's most likely a typical farang." Yeah. Typical farang and typical farang is a little bit the negative uh, connotation because the typical farang, the typical Western guy, and the typical German is uh, never smiling, behaving a little bit rude, is very direct, has no fun, yeah, is always punctual. So the, there are many, many such uh, stereotypes, uh, which are all somehow true <laughs> for for some of the, the Germans. But nevertheless, um, I heard then after a while, and I got uh, always. Um, I don't know if she's joining, but uh, greetings to my secretary, former secretary, Konush, because I learned a lot uh, from her. Because um, ah, I see Kun, Kun Kevin is also here. So I, okay, many of my <laughs> Kun, Kun Kevin is also there. So not only from Kun Kevin, but also from uh, Konush and, and all of my management team, I learned so much about Thai culture. And one thing after a while she told me was, hey, um, I heard already people talking about you. Kun Thomas is not the typical Farang. Yeah? And that is really an interesting, um, was, was the first appreciation um, that the people realized, okay, I'm a little bit different. I'm not the typical Farang. Because first of all, he has a friendly face. So they said, oh, Kun Thomas, he has a friendly face. Um, and that means also um, he is not Jai Yen. Uh, he's not Jai Ron. I come to that later. That means hot heart or impulsive, aggressive. And Jai Yen, Uh, he is Jayen, that means he has a, a cool cool mind, that means he's not uh, aggressive. Uh, he's even sometimes Samruam, uh, that is a specific word, I come to that also, is calm, but I'm of course gesturing maybe too much and walking too fast, so I'm not always, uh, I'm not always um, uh, Samruam. And he understands Greng Jai. Again, the principle from, from above, Greng Jai principle, this is very, very important that you understand what does it mean. And um, They, the Thai people recognized that I was able to, to understand that. Um, and then there are some other uh, sayings. Uh, after a while, um, I heard even sometimes people saying he is Nam Jai. That means he has a heart out of water. So it's very generous and empathic. That means Hen Jai. So look into the heart. So you see many word, words with heart. We come to that also again uh, later across that topic. 
And, and then I found by, by digging deeper into the Thai culture, also due to leading 99% um, yeah, Thais, I came across one um, interesting concept, which helped me to remember the five important things or behaviors uh, or characteristics. And this is the five so-called 5S concept. So not about lean. That's coming later, but that's about uh, the five uh, words starting with S. It's about the first one is samruam. That means being calm. So whenever you see Thai people behaving, they behave very controlled, very calm. They don't talk as fast as I talk and they don't gesture wildly like I gesture now. You cannot see that, but they are samruam. Number two is very important. They are clean. And that means physically but also also like the body, but also the mind. And uh, that's called sa'at. Sa'at, very clean, comes also from Buddhism. And third, supap, that means polite. Yeah? That's easy to understand. Number four, sanuk, that's about fun, having fun. It's also important to understand that. And sadwak, and sadwak means it should be comfortable. Whatever you do, it should be easy and best case convenient. Yeah? And with this uh, concept in mind, um, you understand already much, much more uh, about uh, Thai uh, behavior. Um, back to Grang Jai again. Uh, and this is one interesting thing. Um, you might have heard of that again or already if you're living abroad or living in Thailand. It happened also to us and to our friends that they have a mate uh, working in the household and that the mate is just destroying things. And we always ask why. I mean, she is destroying things because she wanted to be fired. And why? Because she is just grand jai to hit towards his boss. That means he would like to avoid, she would like to avoid that his, her boss is losing face. And by doing so, um, or, or what she's doing is to uh, give him a reason to fire her. That sounds a little bit strange or unlogic from a pure Western perspective, but think about that one. The hierarchy, distance, the power distance between a maid and the boss is, is super high. So um, that means that uh, she cannot just say, I don't like to work here anymore. So she, because that would maybe offend him or uh, will, will lost or lost the face. Um, maybe showing me quickly again back here. Ah, you can see me now, right? Uh, interesting because I can I still uh, see here my screen. Uh, so, uh, okay, good. Um, then I can, I can tell you, yeah. Okay, I can see me like this. Okay, um, so <laughs> um, to tell you one one other interesting story, um, it happened to us that uh, our mate, uh, because we were just talking about uh, the mate, um, our mate, he, she found out that we like banana cake. So she was baking banana cake that was super nice, and then we, we ate it, and then a few days later, she made another banana cake, and that was also nice. And then the third day or after a few days again, she made another cake. And then we said, ah, uh, it's enough. Um, no cake, no cake. No. And then the day afterwards, she made another cake. And then we said, no, no, no cake, no cake. The day afterwards, she baked two cakes. And my wife got crazy already. She said, hey, no cake, no cake. And the day afterwards, she made a cake. And then we were calling uh, Kunush, my secretary again, and he said, hey, can you help us, please? I think we, 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 we missed something. Yeah? And we were talking about the situation, and then she helped us to shift the perspective because, first of all, our maid, she really did not understand any word English. But what she understood by our gesture was, there is no cake. There is no cake. And then by being aggressive, like, there is no cake, she was feeling pressure, like, making more cakes, making more cakes. There is no cake. So that was really then for me like, oh my God, we are so wrong by thinking, hey, the other person, in this case, the mate is wrong and what the hell she's doing. But we completely did not understand uh, that, yeah, we were just wrong yeah, in the communication. So that is a very, very interesting example. And I yeah, started uh, taking care more carefully, uh, thinking about those situations. So. Before we come now to the next chapter, we could even, um, so we could, uh, that, that was my drawing about the banana cake story. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we could even answer the one or the other. Ah, before, before we come to the next chapter, because to close this chapter, 
I learned, I think I learned it from Kun Somsak. I don't know if Kun Somsak is joining. Uh, he He's working now in Hemerat plant and he was my HOD at the time. Very senior HOD. Kun Somsak told me one important thing. This is my favorite hack because how to deal now with this great grand jai principle? Because sometimes you need the clear information direct in the business context. You need the, the direct feedback or the direct problem on the table. And the best is to say, you, um, to use the de grand jai method, what I call de grand jaiing. This is by just saying in Thai, my tong grand jai. And my tong grand jai means don't be polite, just speak openly. And by this, you can like, switch the Grand Jai principle off literally quickly and say, hey, now my Dong Grand Jai, just tell me what is the problem. And that worked very well for me. The HOD is, by the way, the head of department. So my head of departments, um, thanks for the question. Yeah, sorry, we're using always abbreviations. So the head of departments, uh, that was that was the, the, the first line of management reporting directly to me. And they were, of course, used already to the foreigners, Western working style, and they could also help me to translate many times. And if I'm asking them, hey, what would a Thai leader now do? They always uh, had very, very good hints. So many, many of those learnings here are coming from my head of departments, including Kun Kevin, who is here on the line. Okay, Melina, before I jump to the next chapter, do we have some questions in the line or? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we also collected questions in our AES community. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And one question they had in, in, in advance, um, it's also quite good related to the three circles you ah, yeah. just okay. shown. So one thing um, our community was asking is who had the biggest influence to you while yeah. you were in Thailand and why? Because yeah. you told yeah. us about a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Who had the biggest? Clearly, number one, um, from my point of view, was my secretary, Kunush. Kunush already took care about my topics, my uh, uh, private and business matter, and all the intercultural things a year before I joined to Thailand, maybe half a year ago, or half a year before I, I came to Thailand. Um, and she understood after, because we were working every day together, and after a while, she really understood what she needs to do that I understand things better. Mm -hmm. And I understood what she wants to tell me if she is, if she was walking outside of my office, mm -hmm. looking to me. And then I was asking everything. Okay. Yeah. Everything. Okay. Then, really? Everything. Okay. You would look, like to tell me something. Yeah. No, no, everything fine. I said, really? Hey, just come in. And then she came in and she had a super important <laughs> information for me. Yeah. So okay. she, that was really interesting. And after a while, she came like straight away. Hey, Kun Thomas, I have important information for you. Yeah, um, but that yeah. developed over the time. Yeah, so that yeah. was for sure number one. And number two, like I said, all my head of departments, Kun Kevin, Kun Komsan, uh, Kun Anuson, Kun Pun Lab, Kun Somsak, yeah, and, and many more uh, in the plant who really helped me to understand the Thai culture. Yeah, quite interesting. I think it's important that you have like people who support you in such a nice way. Yeah. Thank you for the answer. Okay, so then let's continue. Share again my screen because um, I have one important thing um, to share now in the next chapter. And uh, this is again about, let's check. So this is here in the, in the fifth part. This is about respect. I mean, respect we heard already is very important uh, in, in Thailand. By the way, not only in Thailand, but in Thailand without showing respect, um, it's from my point of view, really difficult uh, to really to really uh, live uh, in Thailand and understand the culture. You see here also from a book, The Art of the Why, if you're interested, um, a quote like, you will probably feel more at home in Thailand if you do things the Thai way and learn the why. And the why is here, shown here, that's the very well-known uh, greeting, of course, but it's much more than a greeting. So the why is used um, of course, to, to greet each other, but it's also to apologize, it's to say thank you, it's to honor someone like maybe Buddha or um, a monk or even high, higher hierarchy or the king even. Yeah. Um, so this is a very important thing and a funny other story uh, happened to me in the plant because I was used at the beginning to do the Western, uh, the Western shake hands. Yeah. And then I was walking to the, um, walking to the manufacturing line and I was just greeting, I, I tried to greet one of the workers and just 
take, uh, took my hand, yeah, open hand, and then the guy was giving me a screwdriver because he, he was not used at all to shake a hand the Western way. And I understand, okay, it's maybe not a good idea. So you have to learn the why at least a little bit. Um, it can be difficult because um, if you do it wrong, it can be maybe even offending someone. But best case is to understand a little bit how to do the why um, and greet people properly, show a little bit respect. Um, that will be always nice. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can also just smile and just do nothing. So don't uh, use your hand, but you can also just smile. That's always that's a, a good thing. Yeah, before we come to the number six, we could also have some... Yeah. More question? I guess you have some. <laughs> so um, you explained about the why and that it's a um, very important thing in Thailand. And one question we have is maybe at the beginning you still did mistakes. Yeah. And um, for us, it would be interesting if you can give us an example and then how the situation after your uh, mistake uh, developed and where they're like uh, correcting you friendly since you are Farang or where they like yeah. angry. Yeah. I mean, I did many mistakes. You can find them all in my mind map and I always learned something out of it. Um, one favorite example, which I can pull ahead now, was um, the following situation. Um, remember, Kunush, she was walking outside of my office and then I was watching her and saying, hey, Kunush, you would like to tell me something? No, no, everything okay. And then I said, really? And then she came and she said, I heard, Kun Thomas, you complained about the cleanliness in the logistic outbound area. And I said, really? I was not even talking to the logistic manager the last seven days or something or two weeks. Then he, he, she said, yeah, but I heard uh, so someone said you complained. Da, 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 da. And then I said, okay, I, I really tried to find out. That took us maybe 30 minutes until I found out what really happened. And what happened was the following. I don't remember exactly which guy it was. But it was an intern. You know that you were also an intern. So an intern from Germany, a new intern from Germany. And I was walking with him in my daily plan tour, also through the outbound logistic. And it was 2014. Guess what happened in 2014? It was the Football World Cup. And I was talking to the German guy about the match the night before when the Germans played rather medium. Yeah. And then I said, hey, did you see that? Unbelievable. They could <laughs> not uh, get this, uh, go strike this goal. And, da, da. and then I was looking a little bit angry. I was gesturing wildly with my hands and the in a foreign language, in a German language. And the intern was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> da, 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 da. And 50 meters far away behind the blue boxes, um, oh, 50, meters behind, uh, uh, 50 meters far away behind the blue boxes, Uh, my supervisor of logistic was just observing us wildly gesturing, walking through the outbound area. And he was concluding, oh, Kun Thomas is complaining about my orderly and cleanliness in the outbound logistic. Okay, so then I understood. And then I talked also to the guy and I said, hey, sorry, I was not Samruam at all. I was also not taking care of my face. I was not taking care of my gesture. Uh, sorry if I offend you, that's really, um, I will take care more yeah, to, to not get people confused and cause misunderstandings. That was clearly my, my fault. Yeah. yeah, that was a very good uh, explanation, I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and let's go on with the next topic. So, okay, so let's move on. We're already pretty much ahead in time, but uh, almost through. Um, and then I have some surprise for you at the end as well. So um, what is also important to understand is a very clear hierarchical system which we have in Thailand. Yeah? So there's a system where everyone knows his or her place. And that's important to keep the order, to understand who is where in the hierarchy. So for example, the king is pretty much on the top. Um, higher ranked people in an organization like also in the public sector are rather higher ranked. And then like also people working maybe, uh, or taxi drivers or gardeners are rather lower ranked. So this is very clear order, clear rules, but also clear expectation. That means also regarding age. Uh, typically, the seniority principle says that a senior guy has, of course, already did more yeah, in his life, and but also has then, so there's a higher expectation to senior people because they have more experience and so on, more knowledge, and there's less expectation to younger people. 
And this clearly uh, hierarchical system leads, of course, sometimes to, let's say, challenges from a Western perspective. Because for the Farang, uh, the foreigner, it's, it's sometimes difficult to judge for the Thai guy how, where is he positioned uh, in this hierarchy. Yeah? Typically, many Thai people think that all foreigners have more money, which is not true, but uh, like in general, and therefore they rather tend to put them a little bit higher um, in the hierarchy. Um, also, the, the boss, if you are working in, in a company uh, like us, um, the, the, the boss, the direct superior, the boss boss is much more respected compared to a Western organization because in a Western organization, you are able to talk on eye level uh, to the CEO, even if you are a normal uh, associate. Yeah? But in a, in, a Thai, um, uh, yeah, in a Thai culture, they would be very, very hesitant to talk, for, of course, openly and directly to higher management due to Greng yeah, Jai as well also, to, due to respect. And therefore, it's very, very difficult for them to say no to the higher management. Yeah? Um, this is a very, or would be um, seen as very unpolite, very rude, very disrespectful. And um, so they typically follow rather the order of the boss. And another example of our mate is, is depicted here, because we had guests and our first mate, and yeah, we, had, uh, we were just a few weeks in Thailand, and then we asked our mate, hey, can you cook? Well, of course, she said yes, yes. Uh, can you cook us a meal? Um, and then she was uh, looking like, uh, okay, what meal? And then I said, yeah, just, you know, some typical Thai meal, just rice, meat, and vegetables. Then our guest came the next day, and what we get was exactly plain rice, plain meat, and plain vegetables, without any sauce, even not cooked, some, some part of it, because I just said, rice, meat, vegetables. So she was just clearly following my order and I was just not precise enough or not shifting the perspective to understand what I would have, uh, uh, could have done better because I could have said, hey, cook me, gank your one guy. Everyone knows in Thailand how to cook that. Yeah? Uh, it's it's a green curry with chicken or like um, chicken, curry, uh, chicken cashew nuts. So she would she would have just made it. So our, our order was was just wrong. Yeah, and um, on the other hand, um, that leads also sometimes uh, to very high commitment. Another story, and I don't know if someone from from the technical functions is joining here uh, this talk. So that happened uh, to me when I was walking late night through the plant, and I met some engineer from technical function area. And he was uh, like a little bit tired already, like sleeping almost on the desk. Yeah, And I, I was asking him, hey, why are you working so late? And then he said, and then he pulled out a, a, an email, which was already a little bit dirty and not in well shape anymore, a printed out email, which he got from his boss boss with a subject important task for Kun N, the, the engineer, that he should improve this in that process. So he got from his boss boss the direct message task from his boss 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 that was me the plant manager to improve something and therefore he was working so late because he knew okay that must be super important and um, then 48 hours later i met him again and then he said hey boss i'm already 80 percent done with your task and he was shaking with his uh, uh, yeah, dirty piece of paper printed out email and said hey i'm 80 percent done he looked a little bit tired had already some some uh, yeah, tired eyes and so on. But you can see, on the other hand, that you, you, you generate, if you use this hierarchical principle in the right way, you generate a really good progress, even though I, you should have, you, you need to take care what kind of task you are giving. Yeah, maybe this was not even a so important task, but if you say it's important, and if you have a good relationship to your staff, they will say, hey, it's from Kuntomas directly, it must be super important, and then they will do everything what they can. Right? Um. So oh, let's see how much time we, we still have left. Uh, another, another funny story, um, because that, that one is also a good one. Um, uh, that is uh, my favorite story about setting up a meeting with Mr. Meyer in Germany. Uh, imagine the following story. Um, it happened all, all by the way, it, it, it all happened to me. Yeah? Um, I told not my secretary, Konush, but I told another guy somewhere in the organization, hey, there's an important meeting about this and that topic. I'm, please, can you set up with Mr. Meyer from Germany? Yeah? And then I sent an email, like important telecom with Mr. Meyer, da -da -da -da, dear Kun, I don't know. Please set up the telecom with the following participants, Mr. A, B, C, D, Kun, A, B, C, D. Thank you, Thomas. 
Then after three weeks, the date arrived with this important uh, uh, meeting, Telecon, and we were all there, Mr. ABCD and Kun ABCD, but Mr. Meyer was missing. Okay, what happened? Um, I, I looked into the invitation, Mr. Meyer was not even invited. Okay, interesting. And then, uh, okay, we, we stopped the meeting and then under four eyes, I talked to, uh, to the guy who organized this meeting. I said, hey, by, by the way, why was Mr. Meyer not invited? And then he or she said, hmm, yeah, I was even wondering why Mr. Meyer was not on the participants list. I mean, uh, again, uh, maybe my fault because I put the participants list very detailed, but without Mr. Meyer. But of course, assuming that important telecon with Mr. Meyer would be enough to to follow uh, exactly uh, the, the the order to to invite also Mr. Meyer. But he, the Thai guy said, yeah, I was not sure. And he was too grand jai to ask me, hey, maybe did you forget to put Mr. Meyer on the invitation list? And that was then. Uh, yeah, another example, which was very interesting, where I learned you need to shift the perspective and read also between the lines and be precise with your, um, yeah, with your uh, tasks and, and requests. Yeah. So before we come to the last chapter, we can we can have one, one more question in between. By the way, in the chat, are there, is there anything? Okay, if not, yeah. Um, yeah, so there is one question. I want additionally okay. to, ask, to okay. ask you. So um, you told us about how to talk to people in Thailand and so on. And now you are like back in Germany. Mm -hmm. And for us, it would be interesting. Do you think that you still use more the way uh, how to solve problems yeah. like in Thailand? Yeah. Or are you now here sticking back to your German way? So ba basically, so let me give you 50% um, of the answer because at the end, I will exactly talk again about this topic because at, at the end, um, some of the learnings I had, and I will summarize that at the end uh, again nicely, some of the learnings, they are generic. They have nothing to do with Thai or Asian, uh, like showing respect, for example. You can show respect to everyone. Yeah? It's just pretty much um, common and more pronounced in, in Thailand. Um, and therefore, I would say, as I was born, I was always living a little bit the Asian way. So I was always like, uh, try to, to be very flexible. Um, I'm typically uh, very nice and, and positive. Uh, so I had, I had this already in, within me, but I know how to behave as a typical German. If necessary, I can do that because I just need to behave like my mother. Um, and I can behave like an Asian, like my father. So that is maybe the advantage to live uh, or to, to be to was bo uh, born and raised between two worlds. And back in Germany, honestly, I had some issues to adapt to the German culture again after mm -hmm. four years in Thailand because I felt many, many things in, in Germany were so different. People were suddenly not smiling at you anymore. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, if you walk here through Stuttgart, yeah, mm -hmm. and no one is smiling at all. Okay, yeah, so uh, I mean, you have good luck if no one is shouting at you. So <laughs> Uh, that, that was really difficult yeah. also for my children imagine they were they, they were in a nice school with uh, 10 different nationalities and come back to a german primary school and my son came 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 at, came home from the the other day and said Do, you daddy um, someone just punched me in in the stomach and i don't know why because i did not do anything to him yeah, because it never happened to yeah, him, because true. you respect each other yes. very much also in a Thai school. You respect your teacher, you respect your, your friends, even people you don't like, you respect. Yeah. And that was pretty hard also for my, for my children. Yeah, I see. So actually, you were also answering another question we just had in our Q&A. It was like, do you think it helped you that you also like raised a little bit in the Asian yeah, world? Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah. Because my Thai colleagues uh, used to say, uh, he looks German but he has a Thai uh, heart or a Thai core, a Thai heart. Yeah, That was pretty nice when I, I heard that they said I have a, have a Thai uh, Asian heart. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I have one or two more uh, topics. Um, okay, so let's see if I can manage the time. Um, ooh, I will hurry up a little bit because th there is at least one very important... Ah, here's, by the way, the, 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 the story about the logistic guy complaining when I was wild, wildly gesturing. <laughs> that is, the drawing is uh, pretty bad, but <laughs> that was this story. And um, then um, this is also interesting here. 
Sanuk Sabai Saduak. That's about work, feeling workload. I mean, compare these two charts here. Um, the typical European works eight hours yeah, in a constant pace, maybe with stress, never smiling, working hard, and then afterwards they relax or on the weekend. Yeah. In Thailand, it's a little bit different. Uh, in Thailand, my observation is or was that the people tend to distribute the existing work over a longer period of time. And why? Because at the end, it's less stress. Yeah? I mean, the work is the workload is the same, but the feeling of the workload is less. And that's also difficult to understand from a Western perspective. Uh, it's more about the field workload than the absolute workload. A work workload. So it's more saduak, that means comfortable. It's in best case sanuk sabai, so it makes fun to work. And therefore, I introduced a lot of friendly competitions. Yeah. Um, so whenever we had a improvement activity in Thailand, in the shop floor or also in indirect areas, we made friendly competitions. And uh, that helped a lot because, and this is something I take also away from, from my journey, um, a philosophy of life, like also enjoy the life without fun. You have no good karma. I mean, it's not forbidden to have fun at work, right? Why? So, um, and uh, therefore I invented, for example, the 5S card game that was a BPS, so Bosch production system topic, yeah, like um, a lean production principle, 5S, clean up and so on. Uh, we made cards to show it's good, it's bad. So you don't need to say to someone, hey, your shop floor is dirty and I will punish you for that. So then that would be the Western way. Yeah? And if you don't clean up until tomorrow, then something happens. Yeah? That would be the Western way. We made it nicely, friendly competition. We collected the cards. Hey, this is a deviation. This is good. Yeah? Appreciation, deviation in a funny, funny way, playful way. Important uh, topic again is about feedback. I mean, feedback you can give. I think there was also some, some, some question maybe. Um, feedback um, is very important, of course. You can give feedback in Thailand. Um, but of course, if it's critical, under four eyes only. And of course, a little bit nice, uh, not, not too, too harsh. But you can do also group feedback because what you never should do is to, um, to I don't know, to, to give a critical feedback to an individual in front of a group. I mean, this person would lose completely face in front of all his colleagues, friends, and so on. Um, but a group feedback, uh, I, I found uh, works well because um, you can say, hey, the group did not achieve the target. So a group cannot lose face. Uh, the individual could lose face only. Um, and <laughs> Kunush was always telling me, uh, that's maybe just on the wrong place on the map. Uh, he, she was always telling me the worst thing is if the boss is sad. So they try to avoid by any means to, to make you as a boss sad especially if they like you, yeah? And that makes it sometimes difficult because um, they might not tell you the truth because they don't want you to be sad. And then I told them once, hey, you know, if I find out that we had the problem already three months ago, I would be even more sad. So if you tell it right now, then I'm not sad, yeah? Uh, that worked partially. Um, last bigger topic, I just would like to touch it because it's for me very important. You come all to Thailand and you see a lot of smiling people. But there is not just one kind of smile. There are 13 ways of smile. Uh, there's also some research about it. You can read that also in, in the internet and in some books. There are minimum 13 ways of smile. And I just took out the, the few ways of smile I experienced most. Um, and I will just show you some example because very interesting um, that they have, uh, there are even names for that. Yeah. So there is the, the yin tak tai. So yin means smile. And the yim tak tai means uh, that's the normal smile to say hello. So that's the normal smile. You will always see a Thai smiling at you. So I call it the I don't know you well smile, uh, but most it's the most common polite smile. Then there is the yim tang nam ta. That's the smile with tears. And I experienced that as well because this has a two twofold um, meaning. It can be I'm so happy I could cry inside smile. Or it can be, I'm so sad inside, but I'm still smiling. Yeah? You will see that if maybe someone is dying or something. Yeah? Um, I had a leadership example here when I um, told someone that he will get promoted and he did a very good job. And I said, hey, I'm so proud of you that you developed so well. I could see this. I'm so happy. I could cry inside, smile. Yeah? Um, uh, the most 
uh, the smile I saw most, to be honest, um, and my Thai friends know what I mean, was the Yim Hang Hang. Yeah? So Yim Hang Hang or Yim Hang smile is um, the dry smile. That is the, I know I owe you still money, but I don't have it smile. Yeah. And I, I experienced that also in, in the work context, but uh, best case, always my driver, because um, he was telling me that his son suddenly died and there was a funeral and I borrowed him money. And he said, okay, you can subtract it from the salary end of the month. And of course, end of the month, the payday came. And with a yim hang hang smile, he said, can, I thought we agreed uh, to subtract it uh, in two months or in three months, yeah, something like that. Um, and then maybe one other uh, is also the uh, Yim Shen Chom, like admiring smile. I think I saw that the first time when we had a team building in a hotel and then some, some uh, younger ladies were telling me that they just saw a celebrity, a singer, a star, a, a Thai singer star. And they were like making pictures, selfies, and then like, I admire you. Or I'm, also, I'm proud of you, smile. Uh, and the last one, also an interesting one, um, because maybe there was something in the chat as well, which is related to that, because the yim yo ye, the weak smile, I mean, this one you see if like uh, no point in crying over spilled milk smile. Ah, that, that, that's another one. L this is the shit happen smile. I mean, another one, I saw something in the uh, in the chat, like what what if someone has a better idea than, than you have? I mean, yim to tan is like the smile against. That means... Uh, you can go ahead, but you know I disagree and that your idea isn't a good one, smile. And I experienced that when I came with a Western idea. Hey, I have a good idea. I suggest we do this and that. Da, 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 da. Do you agree? And then they smile. I know that will not work, but I cannot say no to you because you are my boss. Yeah. And of course, it didn't work. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is also <laughs> where you have to read between the lines. Yeah? This is also very important. Um, and last but not least, how to say, how to understand yes or, or yes or no. I mean, in, in Thai language, there is a yes, like shy, but there is not really a no. Yeah, There is a my shy, which means not yes. And therefore, uh, my experience is yes means sometimes uh, I say yes because I want you to stop asking, or I say yes because I want you to stop talking. I, I say yes to avoid a conflict. I, I say yes to keep the face. Yes means not um, I understand what you mean. It means I acoustically hear you. Yeah, if you say uh, so, and this is this is interesting. This is very interesting um, when we get uh, visitors from Germany. I remember very uh, a lot of audits. German auditor, even from the from the OEM, the, the automotive uh, manufacturer, was coming, and then they ask always closed questions like, "Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have this?" And they say, "Yes, yes, yes, yes." Of course, I mean nothing was there sometimes, but they say yes to just shut them up, yeah, to, to question them, to pressure them. And this can, can lead to serious misunderstandings because in, in a German, from a, from, a, from a Western culture a point of view, that could be sometimes understood as lying. Because, I mean, if I ask, hey, did you finish this task? And someone say yes, but he did not. In a yeah, normal interpretation, it would be lying. Um, but I see it differently after understanding where it comes from. I mean, you have to understand that and that's generic. Everywhere in the world, you have a value set of values. The values are the same, but the ranking is different. Uh, imagine, in Germany, if you ask uh, 100 people, under the top three values, you will always have honesty. That's number one or two or three. And respect is maybe coming also, but later in the ranking. In Thailand, it's the other way around. In Thailand, you have respect first. And whenever uh, it's, it's, it's okay, so it's okay to, to tell not the truth, I would call it, to, to keep someone's face because showing respect is more important than being honest. And therefore you cannot say, hey, you lied to me. It's just because they, they, be, they, they, they were respectful. Yeah? And um, when I understood this one, I also could deal much better with um, lying, so to say. Um, okay, and now before I wrap up, uh, so I will, I will wrap up in two minutes. Um, last point here, um, also be careful with sayings, yeah, uh, it happens and, uh, some Thai people know, uh, which, which guy were involved, um, there, it happens that, uh, someone, a foreigner told, uh, said to a Thai, hey, Kunti, you are working like the buffalo, yeah, and 
you know, uh, in, in our translation, a buffalo is a strong animal, yeah, working very hard. So that was the meaning. Hey, you are working very hard. Actually, it was an appreciation. But the Thai guy was super confused because in Thailand, a buffalo is the stupid animal ever on the planet. So basically, he got the message, you are working like the most stupid animal on the planet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so be careful with such translations. Uh, I think the story in Amata is still very famous. So, and now, <laughs> and now I, will, um, I will switch back to the camera. By the way, can you see me now again? Because now is time for, <laughs> time for wrapping up. And um, I would like to wrap up a little bit differently. So I could now summarize the top three learnings I have. So I have basically three learning clusters, not only three learnings. I have three clusters of learnings. I would like to summarize that for you, but in a different way. As I like to do something different, breaking the pattern, um, I would like to do an experiment uh, with you guys. And um, as you are, uh, yeah, we are virtual here, so um, I cannot uh, pull someone out of the audience here onto the stage, but uh, Sabrina and Melina, of course, are, are willing uh, to assist me. I need now uh, a random number. Um, so I need a random number and we can do the following. You guys in the, in the, in the meeting, you just start now writing in the chat, any number you have in mind from one digit, two digit, three digit, longer numbers, maybe not 100 digits takes too long. Just continue writing. And, um, then you write a word, whatever word you have in mind, just one word and maybe in, uh, not in Thai letter. Yeah. Um, and uh, then maybe Melina, you think about, you say a number between one and 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just say a number between one and 10. I take seven. Seven. So you take now in the chat the seventh number, which was randomly put in. Yeah. Okay. And Sabrina, another number between one and 10. Three. Three. You took, you will take the, th the third word, which was put in the chat. And I brought here now some sticker, sticky, sticky note and a pen. And um, so this is just to generate a, a very random uh, number and a random word. And then I will tell you what I'm going to, to, yeah, to exercise, to, to do with you, an experiment. This is really an experiment which you can see, which you can hear, and which you can feel. I mean, not you, but uh, Melissa and, and Sabrina, they, they can feel it. And that's, I would say, most probably the, the smallest, um, the smallest illusion in the world. So maybe I even take off my, my jacket for that so you can see also my, my arms. <laughs> okay, so you have already, so you, so I, I put this sticker. So you write just the number and the word here on, on the sticker. That's okay. I can see that it's, it's just about a on random. One sticker. On one sticker, best case. Yeah. So. Maybe say, say it, what, what kind of number you choose? It's 55. 55? Ha ha. <laughs> so that's a Thai, Thai joke. <laughs> so that's a Thai joke. For the, so the number five in Thailand is uh, ha. So ha ha is a joke. <laughs> okay. Ha ha is funny. And nice. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, nice. Okay, nice. Positive nice. Life. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I will show you now the smallest illusion on earth with this piece of string with a string it's a piece of rope a very small string and because it's so thin i hope you can see that here in in the uh, in the camera because it's so thin and it's so difficult to mark it so i could have asked melina can you write your name onto it <laughs> that's very difficult so therefore please take the please take the uh, the small so um the small sticker and we place it like like a flag yeah just like this just fold it Perfect. So you did that already one time, maybe. Yeah, you know, very, very good. At it. So um, now uh, I hope you can see that. So now we have uh, this, this, this small sticker with 55 and nice mark. That means this string is now unique. Do you know why? Because of the flag? Yeah, because of the flag. Because <laughs> she never most likely marked a piece of rope or a string with a sticker with 55 and nice on it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and so this string um, represents a line, first of all, and a line is always mathematically the shortest distance between two points. Yeah? But it can be also representing a connection between two people, maybe two countries, maybe two cultures. And my first learning cluster, number one is you need to see, because seeing means understanding. You need to see 
between, so you need to see behind the scenes. You need to see and understand the Thai principles, the Thai culture. And you need to understand the Yim Heng Heng, the Gren Jai, uh, the three circles. This is what you need to see. If you don't see that, if you don't understand that, and if you're not flexible like, like this, you can see that your connection might break, right? So second learning cluster is about listening. If you don't listen, listen between the lines, yeah? you will have a lot of misunderstandings. So you need to listen between the lines to shift perspective. You need to listen to understand. You need to listen to be also um, yeah, part, to have a good relationship. And otherwise, you have misunderstandings and your connection, your bond will break. And you can hear that. Can you hear that? Yeah? OK, number three is about feeling. Maybe the most important. This is about being empathic. Being empathic means you need to feel what is right or wrong. You need to, to feel what is in the heart of the people, because if you reach the heart, you will reach the brain. And you can feel if, and, and that causes, or that will, um, that will give you trust. And if you give trust, you will earn trust. And if you don't have trust, if your trust breaks, uh, you can feel that. Yeah, you can feel that? Yes. Yeah, you can feel that as well here, yeah, Sabrina? Yes. Okay, but I need all, all of the pieces back. Yeah. Okay. So now we have here, uh, so you, you see all that small stuff. So what I, what I do now is I, I will do now with the remaining, uh, the small pieces here, I will make a very small ball, this one here, very small uh, ball. And I try to connect that here. here. I connect that here to the remaining piece. Yeah. And now I need some, some magic, some magic powder. Do you have some magic powder? Oh, she has some magic powder. I, I even have also some. Do you have some magic powder as yes. well? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay, perfect. So you're, you're, you're perfect. I have also here some, some, some magic powder. And I can tell you, I mean, even if you saw that it, the connection was broken, I can guarantee you, if you listen, if you see between the lines, if you understand, and if you feel um, what is right or wrong, if you get to the brain and the heart of the people, you will have a very, very strong bond between two people two countries, two cultures, forever. Yeah? And you can see that this is still this rope, which is marked with the uh, 55 nice word. And that's what I call the magic of being a European leader in Thailand. Wow, thank you so much, Thomas. <laughs> I think this is such a good conclusion. I'm really impressed. Yeah, you, you, so you, you can take it, <laughs> you, you, you put it in your uh, money wallet, yes. because then you have always something in. Okay, yeah? okay. I will do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So this was an amazing confusion from your side. I think it was very fascinating, a fascinating event today. Um, different insights into your life, into your career and i think we will just take one question from our q a sure from the audience so let's see um i think we yeah we can take the question how did you deal with your supervisors in case of different opinions and mm. yeah so like you think your solution is better than your boss ones yeah um, that's not difficult for me um, because I'm I'm not the one like uh, pushing pushing my own solution towards my boss, like saying, "Hey, I'm right and you are wrong." This typically will create an immediate uh, barrier. What I typically try is, first of all, I try to understand maybe his solution. Then I say, "Okay, um, I would this is good," and I would have another idea. Yeah. explaining the content, having good arguments and say, what do you think? Can we also go that way? Yeah. And if I have a good argumentation, um, also typically my bosses say, yeah, you're right. I mean, also rarely it happens that they say, yeah, maybe you're completely wrong. And then I say sometimes also, okay, I still think my solution is the better one, but I respect you. You are my boss. If you give me the clear order, I will follow that. But then we will have also this, this consequence. Okay for you. Yeah. So I also try to get him in the boat yeah and then we are together and then we can also like uh, content wise maybe fight without fighting on a personal level i think this is very important that's why i'm saying everything the three things at the end i said they are generic they are not about thai or asian 
being respectful, yeah, listen to others, being empathic, understanding that someone has maybe just now a, a personal issue and, and not a, a problem, a content problem, that is very generic and can apply to, to all leaders in the world from my point of view. Amazing. Thank you so much. So I think with this question being answered, we are at the end of today's session. First of all, thank you so very much, Thomas. Thanks for being here. I think it was excellent for everybody. It was very interesting, insightful, also very fun with you together. And I think everybody like learned something. So that's just great. Also to you guys, thank you so much for your participation. And of course, I try to launch a quick poll. Okay, good. So it will appear now on mm -hmm. your screen. And I kindly ask you to just answer it because then we can learn how to improve in our future events at AES. And yeah, in the meanwhile, I'd like to say that, so guys, can you see the, the poll? We can, I can see it, but I'm not sure I'm the host as well. So. Ah, okay, okay, okay we, we can, can see, see it. it. Okay, great. great, amazing. Um, yeah, so I just like to say again, if you liked our uh, session today, then feel free to follow, of course, Thomas on LinkedIn or everywhere, and also subscribe to our AES newsletter. As said in the beginning, you can also find us in our email. Reach out to us via social media or just write us an email. Also, if you want to get part of AES, feel free. We are always open for new amazing people in our community. And yeah, I would just give you uh, some more seconds. We already have like more than 40 participants in our poll. I think that's... I could I could maybe even use the time to yeah, to, sure. to advertise <laughs> to advertise the book. I mean, yeah. at the end, I, I forget to show that, but uh, it's only for the German speakers. Unfortunately, I wrote it uh, on purpose in German. So all of the stories you saw on the mind map. Um, they are basically coming from my book. So I wrote a very small uh, ebook. You can find that if you Google my name um, at Amazon or somewhere uh, where at a bookstore. It's a, it's a, it's a very small um, ebook. And uh, a lot of the stories I told you today and all the concepts are described in a little bit more detail, uh, also with some uh, literature um, uh, hints and uh, links and references. And um, yeah, that was the way I uh, reflected on my journey in Thailand. So I had to write that down. Otherwise, it would have been uh, gone maybe too fast. So I, by writing, basically, I uh, digested uh, what I have learned and experienced. So that was the way, uh, how it came to this talk. The talk is just a summary of, of the book. Yeah, true. So again, thank you so much, Thomas. Thanks to all of you also for your amazing feedback. I can see something already. And yeah, with that being said, I would close this session now. Stay curious and have a nice week and see you soon at the next event. And we say Sabarikap. Sabarikap. Kopkunkap, nakap. Kopkunkap.